guys? It's your boy, Barca boy, 103. Today we're going to be reacting to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. Firstly, Bayern Munich have set their price to even consider selling Lewandowski this summer. They're still hoping that on July the 12th, he will turn up for their first training session for Bayern Munich's new season. Again, Barcelona are still confident they'll get the deal over the line, but still have to hope that Lewandowski does not show up the training and goes on strike and also pay Bayern Munich what they want for their striker. Now, alongside Lewandowski, another priority for Barcelona this summer is to reinforce the defense, and they've set the number one target as a new center back in Jules Kunde. Barcelona are negotiating with Sevilla. They hope to drop down the price, but also a big advantage for Barcelona is that Chelsea have dropped out of the race with their past CEO Mariana getting sacked the other day. Now the new owners, the new Todd Bowley era under Thomas Tuchel, they no longer want Jules Kunde. They prefer other center backs giving a clear path for Barcelona this summer. Of course, we have a big exit updates on Clement Longley and also Frankie de Jong. And most importantly, contract renewal updates on Gavi and also on Usman Dembele. Again, Barcelona's contract renewal offer is still on the table for him. He wants Barcelona to make an improved offer, but we're staying firm. But Barcelona kind of do hope that he doesn't renew his contract. That way, they don't have to go sign Rafinha or Angel Di Maria and use the money elsewhere in the squad. And finally, a big update on the economic labors. We are gonna be activating one in the next couple of days and as the sale of one of the 10% of the TV rights for around 200 to 210 million euros. But now Barcelona have to worry about other that we that we have as well for deferred salaries. We owe a lot of money for Messi, PK, Busquets, and of course Jordi Alba as well. And also we still owe money for other transfers that we completed in the past. We still owe money for Coutinho, Trincao, and Malcolm as well. But before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button down below let's try to get the 300 likes in this video It'd be very much appreciated also if you're new make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already and let's get into it let's start off with the transfer news over the past 24 hours now the first player that we have been linked with is of course the number one target and priority signing for barcelona this summer robert Lewandowski. now over the past 40 hours barcelona have submitted their second bid for the polo striker of 35 million euros plus 5 million euros in variable which of course has already been rejected by Bayern Munich and sources coming in from Germany are saying that Bayern Munich want one upfront payment of 50 million euros from Barcelona for Lewandowski to even consider selling him. No bonuses, no installments, and there's no trust in the club's ability to fulfill the future payment. So Bayern Munich have set a firm price of 50 million euros for Lewandowski to even consider selling him. So again, no installment, no bonuses, nothing like that. 50 up front, and that's all that Bayern Munich want. Because of course, those variables will be very difficult to achieve. For Bits Germano came out saying that 5 million euros in variable, which Barcelona have included in their offer to Bayern Munich for Lewandowski, are not very easy to achieve so it could be 5 million straight up if we win the Champions League or not maybe 5 million if he gets 40 goals or whatever it may be they're very very difficult to achieve and they don't think Barcelona in the end will pay that add-ons anyways because Lewandowski will not be able to achieve it Again, I think 50 million euros for Lewandowski is a bit too much in my opinion. I would walk away from the deal, but I know for a fact that Barcelona will not. We are too deep into this deal. I think Barcelona, if they had to pay 50 million euros, will do so. Whether it's 40 plus 10, 45 plus 5, or even giving Bayern Munich the 50 million that they want straight up, I think in the end, Barcelona will offer Bayern Munich what they want. But Lewandowski, from his point of view, thinks that the recent offer of Barcelona is very, very fair for him. There are reports coming in from the Telegraph saying that Lewandowski is hoping Barcelona's latest offer of 35 million euros plus 5 in variables will be accepted. Of course, it has been rejected. The player believes that having joined the club on a free transfer back in 2014 after writing down his contract with Borussia Dortmund and giving his services to the club, his request to leave should be accepted. It is also understood that Barcelona's offer matches the valuation that Bayern can play for Lewandowski even though they insist he's not for sale. However, Bayern Munich want at least 40 million euros guaranteed with add-ons. Bayern have questioned whether or not Barcelona have the finance to complete the deal for Lewandowski, who has had other offers, including bids from Premier League clubs, has made it clear he only wants to join the Spanish giant. So we're hearing sometimes, oh, he could do 40 plus 10. People are saying, oh, it has to be 50 firm on. I think it has to come down to when he goes on strike. Of course, Sport have come out saying that Lewandowski said that he's ready to active Bayern Munich won't let him leave this summer. The striker may not show up for preseason. 
July the 12th is what's going to decide this deal. Again, it will not happen before then. Put your forfeits down in the comments below. I will do anything if this deal happens before then. If you get a here we go, something confirmed, I'll do a forfeit. I guarantee you this deal will not happen before July the 12th. On that day, Lewandowski has to go on strike. Their sporting directors, their presidents have come out over the past 24 to 48 hours. Oh, we expect to see him on July the 12th. We hope we see him there. That's all they keep blabbering out. That day will decide the future of Lewandowski. He has to go on strike. If he shows up, deal's off. If he does not show up, the deal's back on. I think right now, it's a 50-50 because Bayern Munich still hope that Lewandowski has some sort of professionalism in him and he'll show up the preseason despite the fact that he wants to leave the club. But of course, if he does show up, I think the deal's off. So we'll have to wait and see. Of course, Barcelona are very confident they can do this deal. They will put all their money, all their energy into this operation. They're a full steam ahead. He's the number one target and priority signing for Barcelona this summer without a shadow of a doubt. Loon does number nine shirts at the Camp Nou Museum will sell a buckload. Of course, whatever we invest in him, we will get it back over the next two seasons. He'll come in, be a great uh, addition to the team. He'll score goals and make us more competitive, of course. But again, July the 12th will be the day so we'll have to wait and see again the second bid has been rejected there are reports barcelona will go into a third bid before july the 12th but in the end in my opinion anyways nothing will be decided before that day now along with Lewandowski, another priority in the attack from barcelona this summer is to sign a new right winger and of course the number one priority is Rafinha. Now Sport have come out saying that Deco is in Barcelona to define what strategy Barcelona will face in the final phases of the Rafinha operation. There are already reports coming out saying that Barcelona have ruled out the option. I think Gold Brazil have come out saying it. I think this deal is impossible. I think what will happen is that Barcelona will make an offer, maybe 40 plus 10, 35 plus 10, whatever it may be. It will get rejected and then we'll walk away. I just seen a picture of Rafinha and Di Maria chilling on vacation. They have no idea what's going on here. Our two wingers that we want, if Demelli does not renew, are both chilling together, smoking a cigar, probably thinking, you go to Barcelona? I want to, I will see. So I think this whole entire operation will not happen in the end. We have the Premier League clubs like Chelsea, Tottenham and Arsenal who will make a higher bid than us. Of course, Rafinha's priority without a shadow of a doubt is Barcelona. He can pick any club in the world. He's coming to Barcelona. But again, Barcelona cannot find an agreement with Leeds. Also keep in mind that Rafinha only agreed personal terms with Barcelona. No personal terms with Arsenal, Chelsea or Tottenham as well. But in the end, those Premier League clubs have more money than us. And they do have that Premier League pull as well. And in the end... We'll have to wait and see with Rafinha. I think it is damn near impossible for him to join Barcelona this summer. But Barcelona will make one more attempt with the relationship that we have with Deco. It could maybe facilitate the move possibly. Maybe 60 million paid over the next five years in installments. Maybe something like that ridiculous could happen. But I highly doubt that. With Dembele looking like he may renew or not. I think the Rafinha operation is dead in the water. But Barcelona will make one more last attempt. Now along with the attack. Another priority for Barcelona this summer will be to reinforce the defense. More specifically in the center back department. To sign another center back alongside the already signed center back Andres Christensen. And of course the number one target is Jules Kunde. I think alongside Lewandowski he is the dream for Barcelona this summer. And a big priority as well. Now there are reports coming in saying that Barcelona have already made an offer. The reports are coming in from Spain, from not the two like you know medium to low end journalists. They've come out saying that Barcelona's offer for Jose Kunde is a loan of 23 million euros plus an obligation to buy for 40 million euros. Sevilla favors this option because it would mean that Bordeaux, who have a sell-on clause, would only receive 20% of the 40 million euros and nothing from the 23 million loan fee. Now, of course, 23 plus 40 is 63, which of course is the asking price from Sevilla for Jules Conde. This sounds like a typical Barcelona move, in my opinion. A 23 million euro low fee with a buy obligation for 40. I mean, whatever we can do to get Conde over the line is the reality. I would take it. But of course, these reports have been shut down. Now, Gerard Romero has come out saying that Chelsea do not prioritize Conde signing. There are two options ahead of him that Thomas Tuchel prefers. One of them being Matthias De Litt, And the other one, Kim Pembe from Paris Saint-Germain. At the moment, Chelsea will not make an offer for Sevilla for the Frenchman, which means that Barcelona are the only team in the race. I was worried about Chelsea's interest, but now it is no longer the case. And I'm wondering, why is that? 
because their CEO from before, the Mariana girl that I talked about the other day, she of course resigned. She was the one pushing for Kunde. Tuchel was okay with it, but he wanted Delit or Kimpembe. And now with Todd Boley, the owner running all the operations, he's asked Tuchel, what do you want? He said, I want Delit and Kimpembe. He said, okay, I'll go make that happen for you. So now Kunde to Chelsea is off the cards, despite the fact that Kunde has agreed personal terms with Chelsea, that operation now, well, it's not gonna not happen, but he's not a priority no longer for Chelsea. They prefer to sign the Lit and Kempembe over Conde, which of course gives a clear path for Barcelona to make this deal happen. But Juan Marti, Alberto Rogue, and Mateo Marito have all come out saying that Barcelona have held talks with Sevilla for Jose Conde, but no formal offer has been made. Barcelona are trying to convince Sevilla, who don't want deferred payments, but without success, for the moment and again Chelsea have a verbal agreement with Kunde. Now Juan Marti has a podcast that he does with uh, Samuel Marsden and someone else I forget his name. He said in this podcast like look I think Kunde is impossible for Barcelona this summer. Every single penny that Barcelona have will firstly be going to Lewandowski. If they have to pay 60 or 50 they will do so and then the money after that will go towards Kunde. There might be not much left and of course if we sell Frankie de Jong we have to go get Bernardo Silva. So he's saying Kunde is very very difficult. Sevilla wanted the full money straight up no installments no deferred payments nothing like that and also keep in mind that Kunde has agreed personal terms with Chelsea for 10 million euros per year which of course is around about 200,000 euros per week. Now, if he's coming to Barcelona, he's earning way less than that. So maybe if Barcelona come talk to him, they say, hey, let's agree personal terms. He said, oh, just to give me 10 million, I want 10 million from you guys. Uh, we're thinking more like six or seven, maybe even five. And then Cody may say, oh, I'm not really interested in that. So the Kunde operation is still difficult, but again, Gerardo Miro keeps saying in his live stream that the deal is hot and it could be happening before, before Lewandowski's deal happens. And of course, I trust Gerardo Miro over Juan Marti. I think Juan Marti is a fantastic journalist in Barcelona, easily top five, best one, but Gerardo Miro is number one. So we'll wait and see. I think no doubt Barcelona are in for Kunde. They will make an offer for Kunde as well. The question now is, can they reach an agreement with Sevilla? Sevilla are being very firm again alongside Napoli and, Bur and Borussia Dortmund. They're one of the most firm clubs in the world when it comes to their price. Now speaking about Napoli as well, Koulibaly is not renewing his contract. Napoli have given up and he will leave the club this summer if a good offer comes in or as a free agent next summer. And again, Napoli do not want to sell locally in Italy. Juventus apparently really want Koulibaly. They don't want to sell to him. He'll sell to anyone else, Chelsea, Barcelona, whoever it may be. So if we don't get Kunde, worst case scenario, we go in for Koulibaly, who I still believe would be a fantastic center back signing, and also he's about half the price as well. So we'll have to wait and see what happens, but no doubt for Barcelona and more specifically for Xavi, Jules Kunde is the top priority in defense, and they will try to make a deal happen this summer. Let's now discuss the players who have been rumored to leave Barcelona over the past 24 hours. Firstly, of course, the main candidate, Frankie de Jong. Now, Manchester United, as I'm recording this video, for me, I'm recording this Friday night because I have to work, so I'm going to have to upload this early. I'm recording a bit early. Anyways, Man United have not put a bid in for Frankie de Jong officially as I'm recording this video, but apparently that bid will be around 70 million euros plus 10 in add-ons or 65 plus 20 in add-ons. It will get rejected by Barcelona, no shadow of a doubt, but again, Man United are very confident this deal will happen as they will play the long game. Now, Samuel Luckers from the Manchester United News is one of the top journalists for Man United, and he's come out saying that Manchester United are so far down the line with the Frankie de Jong deal that if it did not happen, it would be considered a massive disaster. Ten Hag is desperate for a signing, and right now, again, the difference between Barcelona and Man United's valuation for the player is around 15 million euros. So if you think about it really, they're in the exact same situation that we are for Lewandowski, but the player has agreed personal terms, he wants to come to us, and in the end we'll get that deal happening. But Frankie de Jong is still doubtful about joining United, and they cannot agree a fee with Barcelona. At the end of the day, Barcelona want to get the right money for him, that way if we do sell him, we go get Bernardo Silva. That's the reason why. And again, I have to say this one more time, I think after June the 30th, I think this deal will be very complicated for Manchester United. Again, Barcelona are not desperate to sell him. We do want to sell him because we want to make that upgrade in the squad to Bernard Silva in the eyes of the board and Xavi. But if we have to keep Frankie de Jong, we will be happy to do so. And again, past June the 30th, there's no real economic advantage for Barcelona to sell him unless, of course, we use all that money when we get into the one-run rule in FFP for La Liga to get Bernard Silva. So 
We'll wait and see. I think again, I'm I'm very very confident and sure that Frankie De Jong will join Manchester United this summer, and I'm hopeful that Barcelona will get Bernardo Silva to replace him. But Manchester United are playing the long game as they you know they're dilly dallying over 10 to 15 million euros when their owners yesterday took out 11 million euros from the club in dividends from the club. Now you look at it saying, oh, if that 11 million euros was not taken out, they could maybe get Frankie De Jong. Thank God I'm not a Man United fan. It's so bad for them there. You can't even take out their owners, unless with Barcelona, at least with Barcelona, we have elections and stuff. We can force, you can do a vote of no confidence, stuff like that. But for Man United, they're stuck with the Glazers. And thank God I'm not them. But this looks so embarrassed on them. They've been negotiating for a month now, and they're still, again, 10 to 15 million euros apart in evaluation because their transfer budget is so small. They want to make other improvements in the squad. They don't want to spend the majority of their budget on Frankie de Jong, but the new manager, Eric Ten Hag, is desperate for his signing. So we'll wait and see. Again, passing the 30th, I think this will be a very, very difficult operation for Manchester United. They've got to put a bid in before June the 30th or else we'll maybe stick with Frankie de Jong for next season. Now, a player who Barcelona are desperate to get rid of to the point they will do anything necessary for his exit this summer is, of course, Clement Longley. Now, for Bitsu Romano has come out saying that Clement Longley does have chances to leave Barcelona this summer, but there's nothing going on currently with Olympic Marseille at the moment. They have not opened any talks with them quite yet again long let the only way he'll leave this summer in my opinion is a low move and that low move has been confirmed by Samuel Marsden and Moises Malorens from ESPN coming out saying that Barcelona hope that Tottenham can convince Clement Longley this summer. The club, of course, would prefer a permanent transfer, but are willing to reach an agreement on a loan as they look to cut the spending on the wages with Tottenham prepared to pay a significant part of Longley's salary. Again, we are hearing that Antonio Conte, the Tottenham Hotspur manager, is a big fan of Clement Longley and Tottenham want to spend their money elsewhere. Midfielders, wing backs, attack, not so much in the center back department. And of course, a loan for Longley would benefit both parties in this case. Again, Longlet, not really convinced to Barcelona at the moment, but hopefully with a big club like Tottenham coming in, Champions League football, something that you know Omtiti wants but won't be getting, can convince him to leave. I think in the end, Longlet will leave on loan with Christensen, Eric Garcia, Arujo PK, and a new center back coming in. He will be the sixth choice center back in a formation where we only play two center backs. So he's got about three people behind it, in front of him, sorry, and he's got no chance to get in unless we have a massive injury crisis and players out of form and suspensions and all this stuff. So he knows he has to leave. The question now is, how will he leave? Permanent transfer, loan, maybe even a termination of contract or letter of freedom, but I think in the end, Barcelona will not do that because he holds some value in the market. But again, Barcelona are hopeful to get rid of Longlet this summer via a low move. Let's now discuss some contract renewal updates around the first team at Barcelona. Firstly, on the contract renewal of Pablo Gabe. Now, Coutron have come out saying that one of the final fringes to be resolved for Gabe's contract renewal is the duration of his final deal. It's speculated that it will be linked until 2020. 26 for 2027 and again we're also hearing there is a little bit of a salary issue as well but next week of course there will be hopefully the final 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 meeting for Gavi's contract renewal again Ivan de Peña his agent of course former Barcelona player good friends with Xavi will meet with the Barcelona board next week to hopefully finalize his renewal again the two main issues are the length of his contract and also the salary but hopefully by next week all matters will be resolved and Gavi puts pen and paper on a long-term contract at Barcelona and the final contract renewal update is on the contract renewal of Ousmane Dembele and over the past 24 hours we do have some new developments about his renewal. First of coming in from having Miguel from AES, he's come out saying that Nembele called Xavi this week and desperately asked him to talk to President Laporta and convince him to present the Frenchman a new contract renewal offer, but Xavi told Nembele that he already has an offer from the club already and should take it if he wants to stay. Again, Xavi back at Laporta are not giving Nembele another contract offer. Fernando Polo from Mundo Portivo came out saying that Usman Dembele does not want to lower his economic demands and neither do Barcelona want to increase their offer right now and the players now begin to be in a rush to make his final decision. La Vanguardia have come out saying that within the club, the possibility of withdrawing Dembele's renewal proposal after July the 1st when his official contract expires isn't yet ruled out. So again, the renewal offer for Dembele is still on the table, but Barcelona could retract that renewal offer once his official contract currently at the club expires on July the 1st. And finally, the new developments at Dupolo from Deportivo came out saying that if Usman Dembele finally decides to stay at Barcelona, the club will neither sign Rafinha 
or Angel Di Maria, Barcelona will be able to save the funds and focus on other priority signings in the squad. So for Dembele news, we will have Dembele, Ferran, Memphis and Ansu as those four wingers and then Aubameyang and Lewandowski up top with Aubameyang and Memphis being able to play up top and on the left hand side vice versa. For me, I'd be okay with that. Of course, maybe you can look into bringing Di Maria on a free transfer for one year to have some good competition in the squad with Ansu Fati having one knee. But then on the other side, you could say, oh, we do have Abdi and Collado as well. So in the end, I'm happy with that. If we renew Dembele, we don't have to sign any other right winger. But if we don't sign a Dembele renewal, we have to pretty much go for Angel Di Maria or Rafinha, which of course will cost Barcelona a lot of money. We'll have to wait and see, man. I think he will not renew. I think with him being so stubborn, kind of like we are with Lewandowski, we're so deep into it, we can't change. Same with Dembele, he's so deep into it. I need more money that if he backs out now, he'll look like an absolute fool. Imagine him not accepting the offer back in December when he got it and then accepting it on July the 30th, you know, five hours before his contract expires with Barcelona. You know, he'll look like a real moron. So we'll wait and see. Um, I kind of, I hate saying this, but I'm going to say it. Please do not slate me in the comments. I hope he renews just because I don't want to go and sign Rafinha and Angel Di Maria. That's going to be just a trouble on its own. More money. It's just another hassle. I'd rather than Belly renews. We stuck with the forwards now. Just get Lewandowski and that's it. Then you can focus all of our money on the midfield. And if, of course, Frankie Young leaves. And most importantly, in my opinion, the defense. Kula Bali, another center back, maybe Konde, Aspilicueta, Alonso, whatever, has it may, whatever it may be. You can focus in that area where Barcelona need the most strength at the moment. Maybe Bernardo if we do sell Frankie. So let's wait and see. I think he will not renew. I told you 9% he will leave. 10% he will stay. So we'll have to wait and see. But I think the club are kind of hoping that he does renew. But of course, under our conditions as well. So we'll have to wait and see. But again, Usman Dembele is in a rush now to decide his future. He will return from vacation very soon to make his decision as soon as possible. And his idea is to renew his contract with Barcelona or sign with another club before his actual contract expires with his current club on June the 30th. Now the final topic that I want to discuss before I end off this video is give you guys some updates updates starting Barcelona over the past 24 hours. The three updates are the economic levers for the sale of the TV rights, the deferred salary issue, and also payment debt issue as well. Firstly, on the economic lever, we are on the verge right now of selling 10% of the TV rights. This is coming in from Sport. They've come out saying that next week, Barcelona are expected to close the first of the economic levers, giving up 10% of the TV rights for 25 years for around 200 to 215 million euros. This will enable Barcelona to close the year with profits after incurring losses for two consecutive years. During the month of July, the other levers will be closed and that will allow Barcelona to overcome the FFP restriction and also the 3-1 rule as well. Registration of players will no longer be a problem, but Barcelona will want to spend wisely and within limits. Again, we will activate all these levers in due course. It will happen. Of course, Eduardo Romeo confirmed this on multiple occasions in the General Assembly, interviews afterwards, interviews beforehand. We're going to activate at least one before the end of this month. That way we can end the year in a positive for the uh, budget. And then the deadline really for the two other economic levers, Barca Studio and BLM, is July the 31st. But in the end, before, of course, this Thursday coming up on June the 30th, economic lever of selling 10% of the TV rights for 25 years will Will be activated now of course with the money coming in we can spend it on lowering our debt of course Barcelona currently 1.3 billion euros in debt and that comes down to two main obstacles firstly deferred salaries sport have come out saying that Barcelona owe more than 150 million euros of deferred salaries to various players out of which almost 60 million euros is owed to Leo Messi too so when we heard about PK from Sport being owed 100 million euros in deferred salary, hopefully that's not the case. It could be maybe 40, maybe 50, but we owe apparently a total of 150 in the deferred salaries, probably to, you know, Frankie De Jong, Busquets, Jordi Alba, PK, and Leo Messi. But Barcelona must settle this issue with Leo Messi as well as the current captains. Again, Barcelona cannot afford to pay 150 million euros. I want to cut that down to maybe... I would say 60, 70 for all five of the players that we owe money to, not just for one player. And again, the chunk of the deferred salary, of course, is still owed to Leo Messi. By the way, it was his birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, Leo Messi, you absolute goat. So that's something that the board had to keep in mind this summer to pay off on the deferred salaries for next season. That way, next summer, we can focus more on transfers and not deferred salaries like we are right now, of course. So again, that's going to be a key point. And also, 
on fees for previous players. Again, reports coming in from sports saying that Barcelona still owe more than 126 million euros in transfer fees for 19 different football clubs around the globe. Among those include 25 million euros still owed to Liverpool for Coutinho, 9 million euros to Brog for Trincao, and about 10 million euros to Bordeaux for Malcolm. We still owe money for Pianch as well. Artur, I think freaking Andre Gomez is on that list as well. We still owe transfer fees to other clubs for other players. And that's why we cannot pay installments for, to Sevilla and Bayern Munich for Lewandowski and Kunde respectively. They trust that Barcelona will take a long time to pay those uh, payments. And that's why they won't accept the deals right now in installments or deferred payments as well. They want all the money straight up right now because we paid Coutinho, we bought Coutinho in 2017, I believe, or 18, January of 18. So it's been, what, four or five years, and we still owe 30 million euros to Liverpool for Coutinho for the transfer fee. Not, you know, because of, you know, add-ons and variable stuff. Just for the transfer fee alone, we still owe 29 million euros of the, I think, 130 or 40 that we paid for him. Trincao, I thought that was a release clause. I'm surprised we still owe money for him. Apparently, we paid 31 for him. We still owe 9. Of course, for Bordeaux, we paid, I think, 40 for Malcolm. We still owe 10. Again, like I said, I think I saw Artur on the uh, list from Gremio, not even from Juventus. We still owe Juventus money for Pjanic. Valencia for Andre Gomes. It's all over the place, man. So again, with these economic levers coming in, we can't spend it all on the transfer budget for this summer. We got to pay off some of these debts. 150 million euros still owed to players. And you could probably just say round it up another 150 million euros for transfer fees. So we're still 300 million euros in debt just on the sporting sector, let alone the uh, Espy Barca project that's going to put us in debt as well for the Goldman Sachs loan. We're in debt all over the place. So again, with the economic leaders coming in, it will help us in the short term. In the long term, there's still a lot of problems at Barcelona. Of course, we will still have 100 to 200 million euros for the transfer budget this summer. But keep in mind that the economic leaders, some of the money for that, has to go to other debts as well. So that was my reaction to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you leave a like. And of course, leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed. The main thing I want to know firstly is about Lewandowski. How much do you pay? for him up front would you pay the 50 million euros that Bayern Munich won or offer maybe 40 plus 10 45 plus 5 and then walk away secondly same question for Jules Kunde what are your thoughts about that how much would you offer would you go a loan fee for 20 then a mandatory bar option next summer for 40 would you give Sevilla the money they want and also with Chelsea dropping out of the race you think it would give Barcelona a bigger advantage on him this summer thirdly contra renewal updates of course Gabby there's no problem but for Ousmane Dembele do you prefer that he renews that way we can use money in the transfer budget elsewhere like the midfield or the defense or do you hope he does not renew and then go for Rafinha or Angel Di Maria? And finally, on the sale of the TV rights, of course, activating one of the first of the economic levers. Do you think it's important for Barcelona to spend that money on their first salaries and the debt that we already owe to other clubs as well? Or would you use that money right now for the transfer budget for this summer? And of course, make sure you guys subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time on the channel. Take care and Forza Barca.